Okay, so today in class for your InDesign quiz, you're going to do a really brief tutorial that you're going to learn four skills. I want you to review how to do a drop cap. I want you to review how to place a photo. I want you to learn how to do text wrap. And I want you to learn how to delete overset text. The text wrap and the overset text are really the most important out of all of these. So what I've done for you in the um, in Schoology, if you look at today's calendar, it has a link there that will take you to basically what I'm going to take you through. If you are more of a of a reader type of a learner, everything that I'm going to do is in here and you're welcome to just read and toggle back and forth. If you are more of a video tutorial person, that's why I'm doing this for you. So the first thing you need to do is open up InDesign. And we're just going to make a basic document that we can just play around with a little bit. Um, this will be like your Photoshop tutorial or everyone should look pretty much the same. So it'll be easy for me to grade, easy for you to put together because you know what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so we're going to click new in InDesign and we're going to leave everything the same as default. One page, eight and a half by 11, one column, here's your margins. And we're going to click OK. That's ignore that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to click on the text box and I'm going to make a giant text box that goes from corner to corner. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to fill with placeholder text. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to arrange this in columns. And I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways to do that. This is something you will need to know how to do for the newspaper project. So the way to do that, we're going to go to Object, and we're going to go to Text Frame Options. And in there, right here, it says Fixed Number of Columns. We want to change that number to 2. And then we're going to click OK. And what that does is it creates a nice little um, absolute column there, a uh, good gutter, everything that we need. Then we're going to go ahead and fill the rest of that with placeholder text so that we have two full columns of text to work with. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to place a couple of photos. And so one of the ways you can do this um, a lot of you have been using this rectangle tool for shapes. You want to go right above it to the rectangle frame tool. And we're going to draw a rectangle there. And then we need to place a photo, which is a skill some of you still need to practice because I was answering questions about this. File, place. And I want you to use some of those Paris photos. So I'm going to put the Eiffel Tower here. And I can only see a little bit of it, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to fitting and fill frame proportionally. And now I have this nice picture of Eiffel Tower. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my rectangle frame tool. I'm going to click and hold down and I want to click the ellipse frame tool. To draw a perfect circle, I'm going to hold my shift key. And as I'm holding shift, I'm going to draw that circle. Make it a little bit big. Same process, file, place, and I'm going to put croissants down there. Right click, fitting, fill frame proportionally. I'm going to click back on my black arrow and I'm going to move these so that they are aligned with the corner margin there and that they're in the middle there, up at the top. So I've got these two photos. Now if you look, there's all this text that runs underneath the photos. So we need to fix that. I have my text wrap tool over here in my palettes, but if you do not have it over there, you go to Window and Text Wrap, and it'll pop right up. So I'm going to text wrap this Eiffel Tower photo first. I can tell it's selected because I've got the little boxes all around it. And I'm going to use the wrap around bounding box, which is the second from the left. And if you notice, as soon as I do that, all of these words pop over here. 
And at the same time, you should have an error down here. We're going to fix that in a second. Before you text wrapped, you didn't have an error. Now you do. I like a little more space. I think the space on the bottom is fine. It looks like a pica. If I put on my grids and guides, it's actually two pikas, so that's good. The space on the bottom is good, but the space on the right and the left needs a little bit more between the photo and the text. So most of you, when you put open, when you pull open your text wrap box, this little chain link is going to be connected. And what that means is that if you click the up arrow on any of these, they're linked. So they're all going to move at the same time in the same dimension. You can see they're all changing the same. But I don't want to do that because I like the space already on the bottom. I think it's a good space. So I'm going to break that link and I'm just going to take the right and the left. And now I have a little more space around. I don't need any at the top because I aligned it with the top, but it looks a little more even to the sides and the bottom. Okay. Now I need to text wrap this photo too. So I'm going to click on the photo with my black arrow, go to the bounding box, second from the left, click there. And this is actually okay. When I zoom in here, I'm actually okay with this. And part of that is because I'm looking at the distance between the text and the photo, not the text and the box. And that's important to remember when you're dealing with shapes is that you want to look at the distance between the text and the photo, not necessarily the, not necessarily the text and the box. Okay, so I have two photos that are text wrapped. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to double click in my, right here in my text frame. I'm going to highlight just the S. If you remember your drop caps, I want to make this five lines. So I have this nice giant drop cap. If you're going to do a drop cap, make it an impressive drop cap. Don't do it two lines. You should do it for this project, definitely five, because that's how I know you're all doing the same thing. Okay. So if I zoom way out, this is what I should be able to see. I see a giant S. I see a photo that's got a little bit of white space around it, and I see another photo down here that's got a little bit of white space around it. Okay, the last thing that I need to fix is the placeholder text. This overset text down at the bottom, this is how I know I've got this little red cross. So a lot of you, when you were doing your photo essays, you'd go to pre-flight check down here, and you'd double click on the error, and it would say text frame and it would say overset text. And what that means is that there's still text in this little box. So to fix it, you need your black arrow. And you're going to click on that red arrow, on that red cross, so that it looks like this. All of that text is inside that little box right there. So then I'm going to click off to my workspace. Now here's the thing. If you just delete that box, like the box is selected, if I just hit delete, InDesign doesn't recognize that I've deleted the text in that box. So you have to actually go in and delete it by hand. So I'm going to double click in that text box, select all the text, hit delete. And because I'm a neat freak, I am going to clean that up, select the box and hit delete. And now I have no errors. And that's your tutorial for today. That's what I want you to, to know how to do. I want you to know how to text wrap. I want you to know how to fit a photo in a frame and fit it proportionally. I want you to remember how to do a drop cap and how to fix your overset text. When you're done, just go to File and Save. And you're going to title this your last name and InDesign quiz. And I'm doing this from my home, so I don't have the server, but you're going to put it on the server, which will be over here um, in the folder titled InDesign Quiz. And that is your assignment for today. I think you should be able to finish it in one class period. It's pretty easy. Um, if you need a little bit of time tomorrow, uh, you will have some time uh, at the end of class probably, but that's what, that's what you're doing for today.